Hey there, it's Sandy, and uh, here's a little video that can help you understand working with smart guides. First thing I'm going to do is come over here. I've got my uh, rectangle tool uh, selected, and I'm just going to start dragging to create a rectangle. Now watch what happens as the right edge of the rectangle reaches the center of the page. You see that? That's the uh, center, horizontal center of the page. Now when I come down, and that's the vertical center. So the lower right corner of this rectangle is centered on the page. Now, once I've got that object on the page, what I'm going to do is start dragging it from its center point. And you'll see here, that the center point now hits the horizontal center of the page and the center point now hits the vertical center of the page. These are the column guides or the page guides for uh, smart guides. Here's another situation. I have some objects on the page and I start to draw a new object. Now do you see what happens here? the bottom edge of this new object is aligning with the center of the left side object on the page. Now I'm going to drag down a little bit further and you can see the alignment uh, the smart guide shows that the two bottoms are aligned. But I'm going to go past that. Now I've got another object on the bottom right corner. Watch what happens. As I move the right object over, there's another alignment guide here that says the right edge of the object is aligning with the left edge of the other object. Similarly for the center and the right. Let's see what happens now when I draw this object again, but let's look for the smart dimension guides. I'm going to start drawing and you can see the alignment guide. I'm going to come down a little per further past and you see those arrows? That arrow up and down means that the height of this new object I'm dragging equals the height of the object on the left. I'm going to come over a little bit further and you'll see another set of arrows. You see these horizontal arrows? This means that the width of the new object equals the width of the object on the upper left corner. But I can do even more. If I come back down, you see here there's an arrow between the new object and the object in the lower right corner. Similarly, I can come down a bit and you can see that those objects now have the same height. This is smart dimensions for my objects. Here's another smart guide, the smart spacings guide. Now these two objects are a certain amount of space away from each other. I'd like to put this guide the same amount of space. So what I'm going to do is start moving it over and look for the arrows between the objects. When I see these arrows, I now know that these three objects are equally spaced. They may not be the same size, but their spaces between them are equal. Here's another example of what smart guides can do, this time with rotation. Now I've got an object that I'm rotating, and you see the brown indicator? That just tells me what the size of the angle is. I'm going to let go and I've got the object rotated. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to start a rotation. In this case, I see the same brown rotation indicator, but watch, as I get to the same angle, that brown indicator turns green. That's the smart guide. And I also have another indicator in green on the object. This lets me know that the bottom right object is at the same angle as the top left object. 
There's another way that Smart Guides works to give you information as you're drawing. If you open the Preferences and then go to Interface, you'll see something here that says Show Transformation Values. I've got mine turned off, which makes it easier when I teach. But for you, you probably want it turned on. And then click OK. Watch what happens as you draw an object. Do you see the W and the H? This indicates the width and height of my object. I'm going to stop when the object is the size I want it and let go. Now, as I move this object, you don't see the W and the H. What you see is the X and Y. This is the coordinate of the reference point up in the control panel. And when I have my reference point in the upper left corner, I then put it here, and the X and Y are at the margins, 3P. That's a transformation for the width and the height and the X and Y coordinates. I also have, as I rotate this object, a transformation value that shows me the angle that I'm at. So I can come down here and stop at a 45 degree angle. There's one more clue that helps you work to align objects. I've got my rectangle frame tool selected and you can see the cursor on the page. What I'm going to do is move it down near where I know that vertical guide for the page was. Now I can't see it, but there is a little indicator next to the cursor that lets me know that if I start dragging now, I will actually be aligned to that invisible guide. I'm going to press and start dragging. And you can see here that I've got it on the, on the vertical guide. Now I'm going to bring the cursor over to the horizontal guide. And you'll see a similar little indicator appear. Off, on. That lets me know that I've aligned this object with the guide. Let go. Now I'm going to switch to my selection tool and I'm going to move from the center point this object. You can see here that as it aligns with any of the guides on the page or the center aligns that the indicator changes from black to white. That's another clue to let me know that I have snapped or aligned to those guides. Finally, I have the same thing when I move the transformation double-headed arrows. When I get to the guide, the transformation double-headed arrows turns white. So look for this snapping indicator that lets you know that you've transformed or created an object on the guides.